Hey, welcome to the Strong Roots Podcast. My name is Kristen Hill, and we are so excited that you're tuning in today. Our prayer is that you would move one step closer to Jesus through this series. So go ahead and check out this next episode. Hey, Strong Roots. We are in the season where we're talking about grief and loss, and I am here with Dallin. And if you do not know this man and you attend our church, you will immediately love, he love him. He has this way with people where you feel like you've, I've known you forever the second Aww. I met you. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm so Thank grateful you. to get to talk about this topic with you. So would you share with everyone listening um, your grief story and journey? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in, well, I'll start a little bit earlier. So mm-hmm. in roughly November of 2020, My dad was having problems with his kidney that required a transplant. He'd been having problems for some time, but um, he, it kind of came to a head where it was like, okay, you need to do this now. Mm -hmm. And it was, of course, in the midst of a pandemic, which was really tough. So he only had a small window of time where he could get this surgery done. We didn't really have a choice in that matter. Gets the surgery, um, gets the transplant, and then two weeks, roughly, after getting out of the hospital, catches COVID and is now like in the ICU Mm -hmm. for like a month. And he passed away on, he passed away on December 20th of last year. And yeah, we've just been sort of kind of going after that. Wow. So that is, was it shocking? Was it sudden? I know you had time, but like, did it still feel like a sudden loss? It felt, oh my gosh. Yeah especially because the month going like leading up to his passing i was still really hopeful like it wasn't looking good it was like life support after life support but Mm -hmm. i like i refused to be pessimistic and start planning you know what i mean for death i didn't want to do that um so when he died it was very it kind of settled in then it was then it was very real um and at that point i felt it was it just kind of all hit me at once and right So yeah, it it did feel, and it was within the span of two months. I mean, some people have years over the course of maybe a terminal illness. Um, So I think relatively, yeah, it felt very sudden. And you were really close with your dad and he was a big figure in your life. Can can you describe, from coming from somebody who has, I have not lost my father yet, what was that unique? What is, what was that like to not have the man who's always been around and the man in your life gone? Wow. Yeah. Um, it was awful. Yeah. Um, he was a spiritual leader Mm -hmm. for our family. Um, he was just incredibly empathetic, loving. He was goofy, but Mm -hmm. smart and he loved solving problems. And I really enjoyed the way that he saw the world. And so coming to like have conversations with him was one of my favorite things. Yeah. And it felt like losing a, my best friend, you right. know, somebody who truly understood, you know, where I came from, where I was. Um, and it, it was, it was awful. And then the impact it had on my family was, was just as bad because he meant the world to everybody. Right. Um, and it felt like kind of picking up the pieces after that. And that was really tough. Absolutely. So how have people walked alongside of you and supported you during this, this season? Um, my wife especially has been just so incredibly loving. Um, the church community here as well has been so wonderful. Um, actually I remember it was in, it was January first church actually sent me a little, uh, like trinket. Uh, it was like a, it was a little uh, music, like a record player, Mm -hmm. a little wooden box. And I actually use that as my, my ring box, keep my ring in that. It's really cool. But more than anything else, just being there, just being present, um, and when I'm feeling sad, my wife is there, my family's there, you know, you just have to feel it. You just have yeah. to, you can't bottle that up and stuff it anywhere. And you don't want people that are going to be like, oh, is he, is he feeling sad again? Like, oh, you know, because right. then you feel worse on top mm-hmm. of your guilt. And it's already so unbearable. You don't want to be, you know, feeling about like weird socially, you right. know, so you want to just be able to have people that really care about you, you know? Absolutely. So going off that, what's been unhelpful? Has there been anything that you're like, oh, don't do this? Oh my gosh. I, I'll say, I want to say first, like most help is good. Most, most help is, is good. If you are like trying to reach out and trying to do something, 
that's good. You know, mm-hmm. that effort does not go unnoticed. It might seem like it's not, but yeah. it does. You know, yeah. re- just hit, like dinners here, a hug there. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Um, early on, I would say when the grief was really raw, mm-hmm. um, when it hurts the most, things that don't help are things like um, I had people telling me, oh, don't. Why are you sad? Like he's in heaven. Like mm-hmm. Why are you sad? Like he's he's fine. He's saved. Like he's OK. And that one's really raw because it almost, it it comes off as unloving. Yeah. It's like, hey, I don't really care that you're feeling this way. Mm -hmm. I just, I, he's in heaven. Clearly, why would you be upset about that? There's nothing to be sad about, but this person was ripped from your life and this wound is still very raw and that's okay. That's something to acknowledge. I think later on, later in the grieving process, you know, but early Mm -hmm. on, it's not just be there, be comforting. Don't you know, don't, don't tell them how to feel Ask they're, questions. they're, yeah, they're going to be sad. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you feel sad? That's, yes. the, that's the answer. Yes. <laughs> and Jesus wept, you know, Jesus oh was sad. Yes. And he was God. He's perfect. Like and that a lot gives us, I'm so grateful that that's in scripture. Yes. Because it's like, okay, that gives us like, it's okay to be sad. Right. Oh. Right. And it gives you perspective for your sadness too. Mm-hmm. Like, we are told that like we are partners with Christ in his mm-hmm. suffering when we suffer. And it does draw you a little bit closer to Jesus right. when you feel that sadness and you realize on some level you're feeling a sadness that he felt right. or does feel for people that he loses, you know? At least, it, I guess it feels like that somewhat. I don't know. I think it is. I mean, he, when he lost Lazarus, right? I mean, he brought right. him back from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> right. But he still right. cried. Yeah, exactly. You know? and I, or for souls that are lost. Yes, you know? absolutely. So how have you changed? Has this changed you? Drastically. Yeah. Yeah. I feel I feel as though it's like two time periods in my life mm-hmm. um, before I lost him and then after. Um, I am 100% more trusting of God. Wow. Because if you question Sorry, let me say it this way. If you feel angry or upset, then that's not productive. Mm-hmm. It's it's saying, I wanted a different outcome for this situation, and I expected God to provide mm-hmm. a certain outcome, and that's not what happened, and I'm upset about it. Right. It's like saying, God is not sovereign. I, my will is sovereign, mm-hmm. which is just not true. And it's forced me to kind of say, okay, when things happen that I don't agree with, there's a purpose to that. There is right. a reason for it absolutely what do you need me to see god what are you Mm -hmm. trying to show me what are you trying to help me learn why am i here why am i in this situation you know right those are the questions that should be asked not how could you do this how could you hurt me in this way Mm because that was never the intention he's all good you know he would never do that to you did you ever have negative emotions and what how because you're on the for this, at least, you're on the other side of like, okay, I trust him, right? Right, right. In the midst of the like the raw, maybe. Yes. Like that you talk this is like the first couple months, first four months, I'd say. How did you pursue Christ? How did you give it to him? What did that look like? Wow. Yeah. Um, I wasn't angry. I think mm-hmm. people talk about grief in a very rigid way. It's different for everybody. It's mm-hmm. different based on the relationship. Um, but I was very... Um, upset and asking why a lot. I was constantly wanting to know the reason behind uh, what God does. Um, I think he provided that, at least in my view. Mm -hmm. I think that what I really came away with that was uh, death is used as a tool to help us reframe our eternity and reframe our lives. Mm -hmm. This is something that it hurts because God needs you to hurt to understand when he loses his children and they don't follow or they are lost forever that's the hurt right and if you feel uh hurt or upset about somebody in your life who's maybe not following christ or Mm -hmm. maybe you're not following or maybe you know you could try a little harder push a little harder uh i think it just reframes that Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know yeah you know the promise that god says he will use all things for the good of those who love him right have you seen any good come from this yeah um in the beginning no i'll say this i'll say in the beginning it felt like everything was sort of just falling apart Mm -hmm. um but after that 
my faith was strengthened. Mm-hmm. I, I was led closer to, to Christ. Um, my marriage was strengthened because mm-hmm. I started to focus more on that and make that a priority. Yeah. My mom's faith began to grow, or yeah. grow rather, yeah. where it really hadn't before. Um, my brothers had really started to uh, push forward in their faith, mm-hmm. which was, it was reassuring. Right. It was this like token from God saying, hey, I know that this hurt, yeah. but here's these ways that I'm covering and that I'm yeah. showing you like, there's still something good that's coming out of this. And your sister. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the oh my huge goodness. one, right? Yeah. Uh, so for people, uh, my sister recently chose to follow Christ, mm-hmm. which was like the most amazing thing. Yes. And that was actually, I would say a direct result. Yeah. A literal one-to-one. She was, I need to focus on this right mm-hmm. now. This is my life and this matters. And it was maybe, well, I guess it's maybe a few months afterwards, right? but it's still remarkable. I mean, if you talk to her, she can tell you the story, but yeah. it's very cool. So final question. Mm-hmm. Somebody who's listening to this, maybe it's really raw. Maybe they are in that beginning and mm. they're really hurting and you know they're hearing the hope they're hearing, but they're just like, oh, I just can't even believe it. I can't even take it. What would you want to say to somebody who was in that initial phase of grief? Um, first, um, I feel your pain and I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but more than that, Jesus feels your pain and Jesus hurts and he knows the pain you feel mm-hmm. and the rawness and the realness of it and continue to pray. Yes. And it doesn't have to be correct, whatever mm-hmm. your version of correct yeah. prayer is. Yeah. Um, lean on God and allow him to work in your life. And it time, I think, too. Just it hurts the most at first. Right. But continue to lean, continue to pray, and it will get better. Ah. Amen. That was so good. <laughs> yes. So do you have questions you'd like to ask me? Yeah. Um, what I kind of struggled with was knowing how can I, as a Christian, reach out to people who are struggling with grief, mm-hmm. who may not have the same beliefs as me. Ooh, that's a great question. It's like how to respond, how to be there for them. Yeah, without maybe being, uh, without, I don't want to hurt them, you know. Mm-hmm. I think that's such a great question. And it kind of goes off what you've already said. I feel mm. like everyone's so different. So yeah. I'm going to give like my best. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a big, <laughs> yeah. it's a, there's a lot there, yeah. Yeah, but I think you hit it. Be there for them. Mm. I think being there for them in still hanging out, still pursuing, not mm. like, I think a lot of people make the mistake of like, okay, they're they're grieving, like I'm not going to talk right. to them for months till they get over right. it. Put some distance between us, yeah. Yeah, and I think not, I think a lot of us, it's with a lot of things, death, babies, I feel mm. like you get a lot of attention right away and then everyone, life moves on. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important to be, yes, be intentional in the beginning, but more important, two, four, six months later, checking Follow in. Follow up, yeah. Because no one is asking them anymore. And I have a really good friend who told me, like, she wishes people would ask about them. Like, what's your favorite memory? What do you miss most? How are you yeah. doing? Because people are afraid to talk about it because they, I think they're afraid that you, we're going to set someone off. Like, oh, I don't right. want to bring it up because I don't want to make right. them sad. Or upset them or something. Yeah. yeah. And... But you want to talk, they're, they're still part of your life. Yeah. It's such a huge part of your life. And so just asking the questions, like, the, I just already said it, but what's your favorite memory? And just good things. Like, yeah. what did you like most about your dad? Absolutely. How, what's something you're going to do in your fathering that, you know, mm-hmm. to just, I don't know, remember them and not totally cut it off. But I think, and maybe not letting them know because you asked about non-believers, but praying for them. I wouldn't right. say, like, I'm praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Because <laughs> probably, like, just make them angry. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't, yeah. Yeah, like, what does that even mean, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, but actually commit to praying. And I'm the type of person where if I say I'm praying or want to pray, I have to put it in my phone mm-hmm. in a reminder or in something because... Because there's so much. There's so much. You can't... Our memories are terrible. Yes. <laughs> Especially and, with that big of a list. Oh yeah. So use your calendar, even if even with the loss, like so mm-hmm. you don't forget because our lives are happening at a warp speed. Right. To put those reminders in your your calendar, hey, check in on this person. 
right? And then like for Christians who are trying to be there for somebody else or maybe trying to prepare, like how can we, how can we prepare spiritually for eventual loss in our lives or in like our family's Uh, lives? I think that's a great question. I actually, this is kind of going off what you're saying, but even I, I was really afraid to die even as a Christian. (laughs) Yeah. And I, I think they kind of go hand in hand, Mm. like being afraid of death, not only for ourselves, but for others um, as Christian, like we shouldn't be. And mm-hmm. we feel that tension, like, right. like I know some things. It's not supposed to be this way. Mm-hmm. I know I shouldn't be afraid. God, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, yeah. you know. I think so. To kind of answer your question. I think first, asking God to help you not fear death. Mm. That's something that, for me, I remember getting a phone call. It was this woman that went to our, our church in Minnesota, and we had just moved here, and she was dying. And she called me from the hospital, and she called me, and she's just like, "I'm so afraid to die," and I remember that. I had no answer. And I was just like, I'm afraid too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. you know, I just was like, yeah, it's scary. <laughs> you know, because yes. as much as we're hoping for and longing for to be in God's presence, it's unknown. Right. You know, and there's, there's changes. There's always fear of change. Right. If we're going to be really honest. Yes. Um, so I think to answer your question simply is I, from that moment forward, from that woman, I it was almost God showing me like, you're so afraid of this and we need to deal with this. Right. And every night before I went to bed, because I don't know what it is about being in the dark, it makes me think of death. <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I see that, yes. <laughs> it's a weird personal weird thing, but like, and so that was when I would close my eyes and I'd be like, all right, God, I need you to help me overcome being afraid of death. Mm-hmm. And him personally, and I would say I am not afraid anymore. And I think me dealing with it personally has helped me lead other Christians and have compassion too, but right. to be able to pray alongside them, walk alongside them, and point them to eternity because that is the only way we can right. not be afraid of death is if we keep our eyes fixed on Amen. eternity. So, Amen. Those are great questions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. This was amazing, and thank you so much for being honest, vulnerable, and I really learned a lot. I really appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. It. Thank yes. you so much for having me. Yes, and thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I want to challenge you guys to whatever your fears are, whatever you're going through, to be intentional. Intentional in prayer, intentional in reaching out to people, whether you are the one who just experienced death and you need to reach out to friends and tell them how you're feeling, or if you know someone who has just experienced a great loss, be intentional with the way that you reach out to them. Put those calendar reminders in your calendar or put the reminder to pray for them. It really, really matters. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and thank you again for tuning in, and I can't wait to catch you next time. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure to follow us on our other social media platforms. We don't want you to miss out on any future content. Thank you so much again, guys. I hope you have a great day. And I want you to know I am personally praying that your roots stay strong.